Ah, uh, gaming in the early 90s. A period whereby the most epic console war in history would take place, as Sega would do battle with Nintendo. For a good while, Sega's 16-bit machine would sit atop the mountain as the world's most popular game console, which, in part, was due to the genius marketing from Tom Kalinske and Sega of America. While most people remember Sega's radical marketing campaigns and the many classic games that were released throughout this innovative era, Sega was firing off from so many cylinders at once that many cool chapters in this company's story get somewhat overlooked, including the release of game consoles that most people do not seem to even realise exist. So today we are going to be looking at the history of one of these forgotten systems. I am Lady Decade and this is the story of the Sega Mega Jet. At the dawn of the 90s, when it came to gaming around the world, a few things were very clear. Firstly, Sega had risen to the top of the home console market. And secondly, in the world of handheld gaming, an additional war was in force, with Sega battling against Nintendo to try and reach the top of the handheld pile. Nintendo and Sega were battling on a multiple fronts. In terms of the living room, Nintendo and Sega were neck and neck throwing blows throughout the whole period. However, when it came to gaming on the go, the simple yet practical monochrome Game Boy was vastly outselling Sega's much more powerful full color backlit Game Gear. As you would expect, as the Game Boy had Tetris and the Game Gear had uh, columns. Reflecting back on the Game Gear's lack of success, well, it had one huge flaw in particular. It's terribly embarrassing battery life. The Goliath Sega handheld took a greedy gas guzzling six AA batteries. And when you powered the system on, you would only get a few hours of playtime at best. If consumers, for example, were on a car journey or on a short flight, often the Sega Game Gear would run out of juice before those users had even reached their destinations. So for many Game Gear owners, the device would often be relegated to a bedroom, only to be experienced with the use of AC adapters, as no one wants to start a game only to lose progress when things are getting interesting. And this criticism is without even debating whether the Game Boy's library is stronger. What is interesting though is that in the early portion of the 90s, the Game Gear would not be the only Sega handheld around, as there was actually another. If you were fortunate enough to live in Japan back then and were wealthy enough to travel by air, there is a chance that you could have played on a Sega Mega Jet. Let's be fair, Sega as a company certainly did not shy away from trying out quirky new ideas and as a result would release all sorts of experimental pieces of gaming hardware. In the first half of the 90s alone, the Game Gear was on the market alongside various models of the 8-bit Master System, multiple different Mega Drives, the Sega Saturn, Pico, Mega CD and the 32X. There was plenty of hardware about and the Mega Jet is another addition to this crazy list. The Mega Jet was Sega's second handheld gaming console following the Sega Game Gear. The Mega Jet differed greatly though as rather than being an 8-bit platform, the Mega Jet on the other hand was a fully functioning portable version of the Sega Mega Drive, the, at points, hottest game console on planet Earth. 
So, how would you go about playing one of these things, you may ask? Well, the Mega Jet was first available simply on a rental basis, whereby if you took a flight with Japan Airlines, you could rent a Mega Jet to play on board during your travels. You could say that this console is for high flyers only. Interestingly, although it is a handheld and a system that is extremely comfortable to hold, the device remains an oddity due to the fact that it does not feature its own screen and instead was usable by plugging the technology into armrests on your in-flight seats. As you can see, the system's controller, like other handhelds, is integrated into one single unit, although the system does need an external power supply to run. Once plugged in, the Mega Jet could be played on small LCD televisions, which were installed on board all Japan Airlines aircraft. This was an interesting, innovative way for travellers to pass their time during long flights, giving much needed entertainment to weary travellers. The Sega Mega Jet accepted all Japanese Mega Drive cartridges, so Japan Airline customers had the opportunity to bring and play any of their own Mega Drive cartridges once on board. In addition to this, it is said though that the airline would allow flyers to rent a selection of four different titles on each flight. It is recorded that two of the games available were Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Monaco GP2. But the system had an existence away from air travel. Moving on from the Japan Airline rental offerings, the Mega Jet was commercially released in Japan in March of 1994 at a cost of the equivalent of 123 US dollars. Not many changes were made to the device that differed from the one available on the airline, although this slight revision could be experienced using an AC adapter rather than needing to plug it into an in-flight armrest. Further from this, another variant of the platform was released, known as the Alpine version, which came bundled for promotion with the Alpine TVE M015 in-dash monitor, which also came packed with Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Now, this is what you call an obscure console variant. Because this version of the device was intended to be a vehicle-mounted gadget, it came with a dedicated cigarette adapter rather than an AC adapter. Outside of all of this, there is also some interesting information within a thread on the Assembler Games Forum, which states that apparently over 100 Megajet units went up for sale on the Edge magazine forum some years ago. It is strongly rumoured that these 100 units were acquired and sold by Indonesian sea pirates, of all things, bringing meaning to the term video game piracy. To quote one poster who uses the name Twinfy, in a 2006 post they would write with regards to the Megajet, the story was they'd all been found as surplus supply in a warehouse belonging to a Japanese airline, which was moving or no longer in operation or something. The guy selling them wanted them all gone in one go. There was no mention of it being illegal. We even saw photos inside the warehouse. The guy didn't have the time to list them all individually. If I recall correctly, there were around 100 units at a cost of £45 covering the unit and £5 covering the shipping. Sadly, other than a brief mention in the magazine, there is no record of the transaction due to the fact that the Edge forums were pretty much always in beta and got pulled down about a year after the incident. Anyway, the buy was a success and everybody got their units. It was all orchestrated by one guy in the UK and I remember it being nothing short of a nightmare for him to make sure everyone got their unit. 
I wish I could tell you more, but this was in either late 2002 or early 2003, and my memory of the incident is fuzzy. I no longer have the unit as I sold it with everything else when I went travelling. It's a shame that I never kept it, but just as now, I had nothing to prove where it came from. At the time, it didn't seem like a big deal. It was just a straightforward group buy. Quite how the story got twisted the way it did, we'll never know. So whether the Indonesian sea pirates thing is even true, I can't seem to go one video on this channel without talking about pirates. The absolute bunch of scurvy dogs, yar. So an airline rental run, a retail release, a weird alpine version, and even a dubious tale involving the scourge of the seven seas but the mega jet story was not quite over yet regarding the quirky console and its colorful history the development of this device would by 1995 morph into something different entirely as a screen would be added with the device later being sold in north america as the sega genesis nomad a true fully portable version of the Sega Genesis with a backlit screen that could be picked up and played anywhere. Well, if you had plenty of money to keep buying batteries and insanely this monster would eat them up even quicker than the Game Gear. If you want to learn more about the Genesis Nomad and its roots, a while ago on this channel I uploaded a video on Project Venus, the bizarre prototype of the console which was the missing link between the Nomad and Mega Jets. So check that video out once you are done with this one. The Nomad and Mega Jets both make up bizarre yet very cool chapters in Sega's hardware story. Both systems are now considered sought after collectibles that make fine additions to anyone's video game collections, with each bringing something unique to the table upon their times of release. The Sega Mega Jet is an extremely unique part of Sega's hardware portfolio and, with no pun intended, the sky being the limit for its relevance. So I am Lady Decade and that was the story of the Sega Mega Jet. Well, if you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell, comment, like, and share with all of your friends. And I'd just like to take a moment to formally thank all of my patrons who back me over on Patreon. It's actually, it's actually quite touching that so many of you like my content and like what I do enough that you've actually gone over there and gone to the effort of actually putting down a pledge and supporting me and I can't tell you like as a creator that feels so like rewarding and affirming and it's just really nice and actually I've made off the back of being able to converse with patrons I feel like I've made like proper decent friends like people that I'm even going to have the opportunity to meet face to face over at LL OLL this weekend which is really really nice actually so if you enjoy what I do and you want to perhaps check out what um, I offer over on Patreon or you'd even just like to have your question answered at the end of my videos then please hop over to Patreon, check out my page and if you like what I offer on there then if it's for you, it's for you. So thank you so much if you've gotten to this point in the channel. I'd like to give a special thanks to the following people and I shall see you all in the next video. So big shout outs to William J. Scott III, Sebastian Velez, House of the Ted, Carl Thomas, J. O'Malley, Stelios Eleutherio, Alvaro Cardoza, Thibaut Baggins, Sir Landry Does Gaming, Christopher DeVieo, Scott Healy, Richard Turnbull, Stephen Quinn, Shane Ewing's Drone, Autumn Breeze, Timothy Hansmud, Ryan Dacker, Dizzy Quala, Marcus Lindstrom, Sandbox Larry, Awesome Jacket Dude, Triforce of Shadows, Johnny Holly, OPC, EmuMovies.com, PWND, 
games, consoles, accessories. Corey Uderkirk, Ben Haradin, Gasper Heller, Sage Meister, and Ago. Thank you all for your support, and I shall see you all in the next video.